To start with, probably all of you know Elton's Dream that was released in 2006, which was the world's first open movie released by Blender Foundation. And that was a, like a big milestone in the world of open animation movies production since it um, inspired practically and proved that it's possible to make open animation movies, but it inspired practically all projects afterwards that follow. Uh, it's also interesting to mention it's a 3D movie and you'll see that a lot of the movies that followed are also actually 3D. I'll continue chronologically. In 2007 started a project called Collect Project uh, which uh, had the goal to be um, collective worldwide open source animation project. Unfortunately, it seems that it didn't happen too much. It's not very clear who was behind this project and what was either the goal. Uh, it was suspended, also unfortunately, very shortly after the launch, which for unknown reasons. But still, this was, I believe, the only initiative that took place in 2007. However, in 2008, a lot more things happened. Uh, to start with, Big Bad Bunny uh, was released, which is also 3D animation uh, by Blender Formation, a comedy about a fat rabbit taking revenge on three irritating rodents. Uh, I guess that most of you have probably also seen it, uh, since well, Blender Foundation movies have quite high popularity. I'm not sure if you have seen this one, which was also released in the same year, uh, 2008, Sita Sings the Blues. Um, it's a musical animated personal interpretation of an Indian epic of Ramayana. Uh, it's a quite heavy text, uh, the Ramayana, but the animation made it really accessible and told in a very uh, funny. funny yeah, way. Uh, what was remarkable about this film is that, first of all, it was made, I believe it took about five years to the author Nina Fahey to make it, but also uh, she made it completely alone um, and it's a 2D animation in um, combining several animation styles. In 2008 started also a Mariavna project that you will hear much more about later. Uh, 
And the goal of the project, which was initiated um, in Russia, was to be an effort to create a full feature anime movie uh, using open source software only. <coughs> Uh, a year later, started a um, project driven by an Iranian studio called Arshia Project, which had the ambition to be the first Persian anime. Uh, unfortunately, it was suspended a year later due to lack of technical knowledge and resources, as the um, studio said, which is the Thailand Pixel Studio. However, they are currently developing another project that seems to be much more successfully developing in, um, in time and uh, they, they might even release something very soon, but I'll mention it in a little while. In 2010 was the release of um, another film, Plumiferos. The premiere was in Argentina and it had the ambition to be the first feature, full feature length. 3D animation using Blender. However, despite it was used, this was made using Blender, and I believe uh, it was made completely using free software or open source software as well. Um, unfortunately, it is not accessible. Uh, it is not possible to be seen anywhere. Um, the rumors say that the, the project was developed to 80%. <coughs> by its original authors, after which it was abandoned. And after that, another crew took over, which was developing the next 20, the remaining 20% in um, kind of secrecy. And in the end, what they released was kind of a compromise. Uh, it didn't turn out to be too bad, but um, maybe that's not <coughs> part of the reason why it's not available. Uh, because, well, maybe the creators were not entirely happy with the project. However, I believe that there's, it's also interesting from the point of view that um, there was some involvement of um, the Urchin studio that is uh, involved in uh, projects like uh, Tube and where uh, uh, also the director of Elephant Stream uh, is involved. In 2010, uh, there was a release uh, also of a French short 11 minute animation, uh, which was made in stop motion. I will not try to pronounce that. Um, but it is available actually uh, both uh, in terms of uh, source and uh, in terms of uh, free distribution under Creative Commons license. In 2010, uh, it was also the start of an Indian project, which is called Chamba Swatantra. And this Swatantra, apparently in, Indi in some of the Indian languages, uh, means uh, free, libre, open. Um, so the film had the ambition uh, to create an open animation movie by pulling in contributions from people around the world and funding artists directly. The film is still under production, uh, but it seems to be progressing uh, maybe slowly, but it's uh, not dead in any case. There's another interesting uh, Russian project that uh, started in 2010. It's um, called Lampibata, and it's about a battery and a little bulb. Uh, the idea was to create a great and good-looking animation short, right, licensed freely as open content. And uh, this year, earlier this year, they released a demo, which uh, I believe could be found in YouTube. Uh, in 2010, started also another project that is driven by Lithuanians, that is called Project 2011, that had the ambition to be uh, a sci-fi type animation short made completely with open source tools. So it's a lot of spaceships and, uh, uh, well, space, uh, uh, space theme uh, in, the, in the demo that was actually released after 2011. However, not much happened after the demo and it's not uh, much known if there was any uh, follow-up on that. 
in 2011, started um, another, the second project by Pixab, um, Pixel in Iran, which is the Olive project, which, as I mentioned, it uh, seems to develop much better than their previous uh, attempt to create an open animation film. Uh, it's not, though, particularly clear what's the plot of the film and uh, what's the timeline. Uh, however, they're now in a post-production phase, so one can expect that it could be probably released uh, soon, something. And um, the social idea behind uh, this uh, project is to prepare a place for young animators um, and artists uh, to participate in uh, professional animation uh, film creation. In 2011 was also released uh, Sintel by Blender Foundation. Um, and it's in the same year it was also released an um, Argentinian uh, 2D animation, which is called Viaje a la Tierra del Quebracho, or uh, Journey to the Land of Quebracho, uh, which was a fantasy fairy tale that could be a starting point to discover the real story of the villages of the north. Um, the film is uh, distributed under Creative Commons, and the creators have promised on the website that they would uh, release the sources. However, this doesn't seem to have happened, and all the website is in Spanish, so it's uh, not so accessible for non-Spanish speakers. Uh, and one of the latest developments is that in uh, 2011, uh, in December, I believe, started uh, Tube, um, which is uh, by the director of uh, Elephant Stream, and it aims to be a new experiment in distributed collaboration uh, that she builds upon um, ancient poem and includes your tube. It's also 3D, made by maybe Blender. And uh, what happened a few, just a few weeks ago, I believe, um, was the release of uh, Tears of Steel, again supported by Blender Foundation as part of the Mango project, uh, which was about a group of warriors and scientists who gathered in Amsterdam to stage a uh, event from the past. So what can be seen from uh, this little review, which doesn't have the ambition to be exhaustive, but um, it gives an idea what, were, what kind of developments have happened. Um, making open animation films seems to be a challenging task. Many people seem to have been inspired by Elephant Stream and the other Blender release movies to start their own projects. However, for various reasons, technical or staff, or maybe other reasons, uh, a number of the movies have uh, uh, suspended, or they've reached a phase after which nothing more could be done or continued. Uh, so this is um, a shame because uh, a lot of these projects seem to have potential. Um, Another interesting thing to notice is that most of the projects are 3D projects. There was just two, I believe, or three that I mentioned that were using another style or 2D approach, which is also interesting. Is 3D a fashion, or uh, is just Blender the most developed tool right now to make animations? Um, but we thought that um, Maybe it would be interesting to hear a little bit more about 2D animation films and what kind of problems or uh, developments there are on the 2D front. So I think the best person to talk about that is actually Konstantin, who is, as I said, the, the project uh, leader and scriptwriter and director of Mariana Project. And I believe he can talk much more about that. Thank you. Can you, can you hear me? Okay. <coughs> oh. Hello. Hello. My name is Konstantin.
the jittery. I'm happy to be here. And uh, I'm happy to present you uh, Moreno project. Um, and uh, also take a chance to uh, make a first premiere of the first result of the project. Uh, so uh, it will be a first screening. <laughs> so, um, oops. Um, I will um, try to, in my talk, I try to s summarize um, my work during the past five years. And uh, I'm tied to, uh, from the start to nowadays. And um, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, tell that the um, goal of Moreno project is creation of um, future film anime movie. It's uh, quite ambitious, uh, ambition target. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, I will start from personal background so you can understand why I'm making all this and why I'm uh, I'm here. Um, I'm teaching animation to kids for already 11 years, and the uh, last uh, three years I'm teaching animation with open source software only. Um, it's I had a lot of experience doing the small animations with kids, so I'm, we teach. I mentioned kids and they producing uh, their own little animation. Uh, but uh, at some point uh, when I was teaching, uh, people telling me, why don't you do your own project? Uh, why you? Um, and I started to think, uh, why? <laughs> and um, so uh, one uh, day, I wrote a screenplay. Of course, it wasn't one day, but uh, I did. Uh, I wrote a screenplay based it, uh, on the Russian fairy tale uh, Maria, called, called Maria Marevna. Uh, it's a fairy tale about uh, quite traditional fairy tale and uh, quite primitive. Uh, but uh, what we did, we rewrote it into the modern, modern fashion. Uh, with sky fi background, and uh, uh, as myself, I am a big anime fan. Uh, I always wanted to make an anime, <laughs> so I decided it will be anime. Okay, um, so in November uh, 2007, uh, I have announced it on my blog that uh, we are starting work on uh, such project. Um, of course. Uh, uh, this screenplay is uh, a screenplay for, for a full feature movie, uh, 70 pages. And uh, it was quite ambitious to uh, start making the whole movie because, well, alone, uh, it's kind of impossible. So we decided to concentrate first on creating a part of screenplay, uh, five minutes. Uh, and uh, uh, to polish the technology, to uh, resolve problems, and to just, just to try, to show what we can do. Uh, so that was uh, our target last year. Um, uh, also, I was a big fan of open source software, and uh, also I was inspired by the um, Elephant's Dream project by this case, and uh, I decided yes, I want to make an open movie too, <laughs> like everyone else. Um, and um, but uh, I did like pretty movies because I like drawing and uh, such stuff, and anime all, all, almost always is drawn. So uh, and Blender is very uh, good uh, in. Uh, very well developed already, uh, but two-dimensional animation is not yet developed, not was developed, not developed that much. So it was 
quite a challenge. It was interesting to try uh, to do something about that. Uh, so I also test almost at the same time. I hit the software which called Simple Studio for two-dimensional animation. I was looking for the tool what will allow me to make an animation. Uh, I had an experience with Flash, uh, which is Adobe Flash now, with Moco, which is Anime Studio now, and uh, some other tools. Mm, but I'm always looking for the open source solution, and then I found Cintiq Studio. In 2007, it was extremely buggy. It was extremely unstable, and uh, it is unstable even now. <laughs> but, uh, but what I saw in this software, it was uh, awesome from the ground up. It has uh, a concept what I was missing in other tools. For example, if someone will tell me, hey, uh, do the full feature move animation in Flash or Anime Studio, I will say, no, I can do it because uh, I can explain why, but uh, they needed uh, some important, important feature, features for big production. Uh, but in, in Synfig, uh, those features were put into the basement. And what was amazing, it was unstable, it was crashing, but uh, I saw a lot of potential in this uh, uh, software. So I, I decided to learn it. Oh, I started to learn it. Uh, also, there, there is a small but friendly community around Synfig. Um, and uh, the problem was, well, uh, I guess I need to tell a little story about Synfig. Uh, it was developed as proprietary software, but then studio developing the software go bankrupt, and they released it as open source. Also, they released a few samples of animation, and that's a very small uh, piece of documentation to get started. And no one around Synfink knew how to make animation with it, uh, how to produce anim character animation or something like that. Uh, so, it was a big problem. Uh, well, okay, I'll get back to this later. Um, another tool, so, Synfink Studio was chosen for two-dimensional animation. Um, um, of course, for 3D effects, was chosen Blender because it's very well developed and uh, well maintained. It's very, it's awesome too. And uh, after some experiments, I decided to use it for video, edi video edition. Uh, uh, there is um, also another tool which. Uh, it's called Pencil, which we use for animatic. Animatic is draft animation. Before you do any animation, you should show the motion in, uh, with any resource. Uh, so Pencil is an open source tool for uh, making frame-by-frame -frame animation. Uh, uh, so we use it for animatic. Uh, I should note that Synfig Studio is uh, not a tool for drawing animation. Uh, its purpose is to bring your animation uh, to good quality and uh, to make automatic tweening. Tweening uh, from one pose to... Should I explain what tweening is in animation? Should. Uh, so uh, you have, uh, for example, uh, there are two way, uh, there are traditional way to create animation. When you draw character in this, <laughs> this pose, and then uh, you draw in this pose, in this pose, and then you quickly switch to get the movement. But there is another uh, way to create animation when you define, uh, when you let a uh, computer to make a in-between frame, in-between picture. So you uh, can make this pose and this pose. And computer can guess that he uh, should draw this, 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 this. But that's it. That's uh, what Synfix Studio is for. Um, and also, it's um, I wanted a movie with uh, um, TV or movie-like quality. So 
uh, you can uh, make it uh, with high resolution or any resolution if you like. So it definitely should be vector vectorized. Uh, and that's what Synthetic is for. You, we draw in, uh, something and then when we put uh, vectors on top of it. So final movie is vector. Uh, so you can render it like you render uh, 3D in any almost any resolution. Uh, so, for example, uh, today I will be demonstrating in health, uh, high health resolution of high definition, uh, healthless, uh, because the high definition I wasn't able to render into high definition today because it takes too much time. But I guess you will not notice much difference on this screen. Uh, uh, so. Uh, also, mm, we use my paint. Uh, my paint wasn't available uh, in 2007. It was developed later, later but uh, still we use it. Uh, and of course, GIMP. Uh, so, uh, what we did in May 2008, we launched the official website, uh, modernaproject.org, and uh, we started to investigate how we can, could make animation with uh, Synthetic. We did a few test animations, we published them, uh, they still get thumbs down on YouTube. Um, <laughs> and um, we started to develop storyboard and uh, animatic for the project. Storyboard, when you have something like uh, comics to show what, what you will show in the movie. Uh, let me outline again that uh, from now we're talking about development only the demo animation five minutes not the whole movie we concentrated on the five minutes five minutes so we try to develop uh, as i've said uh, the problem about synthetic studio was that no one knew how to make and animation with it, how actual uh, make actual animation. Of course, uh, it was simple to make a circle moving from one corner of the screen to another. Uh, but uh, if you want character doing the free movement and complex with camera turns around, how no one uh, did need, no one knew that. that. Um, so. We were investigating this problem and trying to do something. Um, then also much time was consumed, consumed by establishing, establishing infrastructure and automatizing render, rendering. Uh, so what I want, uh, from my experience on developing the animation with KIF, uh, in I knew that the rendering of the project is very, very uh, routine task. Uh, what, what do I mean? Uh, I mean that uh, uh, animation is divided, the whole animation shot is divided into shots or scenes. And each scene is a, a separate file. And uh, you need to, and maybe one scene is many files uh, constructed together. Uh, and uh, you need all the, when you develop a project, you need to always keep them up to date. You need always render them, and you always need to uh, put them into final editing, it, uh, video sequence. And uh, you can render your project 10 or more times in a day. So. It's not out, it wasn't automatic, automatically. You need to do that every time by hand. Uh, but then I started to think, hey, in open source project we have Make, which does compilation. And uh, uh, it automatically tracks which files were changed and uh, makes compilation into binary code. So I think, well, compilation is the same as rendering. Why don't we need the same make tool 
uh, why don't we use the same make to, uh, to okay. render the project to okay. automatically? So I don't uh, worry about which file mm. were changed, especially when you're working with many users. It's maybe hard to track. Uh, so uh, we started to use make uh, to render. It's very easy. So instead of invoking compila compilator, you invoke in the software which uh, makes rendering. That's it. But the problem was that uh, uh, you need to write make, uh, write make files, right? Uh, and uh, they are big. <laughs> there are a lot of them. And when you develop a project, it's not software which is uh, almost uh, static. It's you quite rarely, compared to animation, you quite rarely change structure of the project. Uh, but still. Uh, so that was problematic to maintain, make files. Uh, so I, we wrote a tool which automatically analyzes our project and uh, generates make file automatically. And then it invokes ren uh, make and re uh, rendering all the project. So it's done automatically. Well, it's, it's a theme for separate talk, but uh, I'd better start, stop there. Uh, so, Another problem was the artists and to find artists and dedicated team. Uh, I was young and <laughs> I was thinking, okay, there are so much people in synthetic, uh, not so much, but well, there, is, there are people in synthetic community and uh, I will be giving them tasks and uh, working too and they will be, uh, or maybe we will work with directly with production files, we store production files in uh, repository, in git repository, uh, using the git version control system. So they will fetch, rock, and send back. I was naive. Uh, it's a time show, so it's very hard to find dedicated people, and uh, especially artists, Be uh, because during all these years, people come and go, and it was very complex to do anything, because uh, you must have a consistent style in graphics, of course, and uh, you need someone to draw everything. Okay, and also my personal management skills were a problem, because uh, <laughs> as it turns out, when you manage more than, uh, say, five people, it takes a lot of time, because you're writing all of this email, etc. Okay, so during all these years, we uh, work in at the first stage, we, uh, at the first stage, uh, I started. Uh, I worked on a lot of things. Uh, also, I joined the Synfix Studio development because it was uh, imperfect, and uh, I wanted to add uh, some features. So, uh, for Synfix Studio, it, it was a bad time, so I became uh, become an administrator of the project and uh, administrating website, etc. So. I was interested for this software to keep developed. developed. And uh, what we also developed for Synfix Studio is a, a so-called Stickman template. Uh, the thing is that to make animation, you usually need a bones feature. Bones. Uh, Blender have bo bones animation. So you put skeleton inside of your character and uh, manipulating the bones to make it move. So, uh, but in Synfix, in Synfix there is no bones. <laughs> so we developed uh, 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 using internal features of Synfix, we developed a special template which can emulate bones in pretty limited way, but it worked. Uh, there is no inverse kinematics, if you if it says something. Uh, uh, but uh, it worked. Uh, well, about remake, I'll already told. Uh, it's the thing that generates make file. And uh, we also made uh, some pencil patches. Uh, so it was a software improvement. Uh, so uh, in April uh, 2010, um, well, we worked uh, on the project and there was no uh, end 
to that. No, uh, we started to become a myth. So uh, people watch it on us and say, they are working and working and nothing happened. Well, software is improved, okay, but where is the result? Where is the result for your pro project? And, uh, uh, but people were inspired about the project. And um, in 2010, uh, one person talked to me and uh, he said he wants to present Morena project on uh, Anime Boston Ubuntu event. Uh, so he said, can you make a something like slideshow? To show what this project is about, I think why not? Well, and I did a little uh, presentation, which I want to show you, to, so you can uh, see the state of status of the project at uh, 2010.
reason this presentation got popular and uh, um, but you see there is a lot of graphic inconsistency here different style and uh, uh, I will try to be short the rest of my presentation because I already took too much of your time uh, but um, I have realized that I need to a dedicated artist uh, that I can draw it myself because of the real lack of my drawing skills. Uh, so I need to find a dedicated artist. To find a dedicated artist, I need uh, some money. And, uh, or really dedicated artist. <laughs> uh, so, um, in 2011, Um, in 2011, there are a few things happen that break it the level. Uh, first of all, I started to apply technology developed uh, for in my teaching ki to kids. So we produced uh, two animated shorts. First is Amazing Sandman, and the second is The Adventures of Boraskin Houses. You can find it on the Synfix Studio website in the gallery, uh, both of them. And also, uh, let me mention one person without uh, whom this project wouldn't be real and I would not be standing here. Uh, it's Nikolai Mamashev, uh, my ex-student, uh, who joined the project in 2009. And uh, uh, now he is the main lead artist for the project. Uh, so uh, together with him, we did a few commercial project, projects, and uh, um, we realized that we can do something, but, uh, well, but why we don't do, finally finish Morevna? Uh, so uh, by finishing commercial projects, we got some resources. So uh, I was uh, collected money to pay him for drawing keyframes, uh, to draw main artwork for the demo. Uh, also, we run a donation campaign and in 2011. Okay. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it's failed. But uh, luckily, uh, I was able to refund Nikolai the whole promised amount of money. Uh, and uh, after the campaign failed, uh, Nikolai was so much interested in the project, so he decided, uh, he said, I want to do that to the very end. So he stick with the project and uh, work it uh, since then for free. Uh, and. Uh, so at the start of this year, we defined a schedule timeline for the project. So we planned two months for drawing the main artwork, uh, two months for three months for vectorization and thinning for work in Synfig when you uh, turn drawing images into vectorizer. Yeah. And, uh, Excuse one. me, could, could you please go full screen with the presentation? Oh. Ah, it's. <laughs> Um, not uh, ah. <laughs> um, okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, for drawing keyframes, oh, backgrounds, and uh, one month for extra work, and for three D works. In fact, so you can notice we have a lot of three D stuff there, and we are here. Um, so. Um, what time is it? Because I have one more uh, little slideshow to show about our technology, but if we will not fit in time, we can skip it. So, uh, my question to our audience. Oh, oh, okay, then I'll skip this video and uh, we finally will watch the final movie. Okay, so. Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me present you our work for the last five years. Rip it apart.
mention? Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for a question. You mentioned some slides on the production workflow. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Do we have the time? We we, we we don't really because I we we're going to have a presentation now in like time. But if there's some oh. really good question, maybe one or two questions. Oh. <laughs> 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 what, what did you use for putting the things together, the compositing and so on? Ah, we use Synfix Studio. Okay. It works with HDRI, so it's very good for that. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Thank you.